If you're a major league player and you're in the NBA, glory will always be with you. Nothing can go wrong. The parade of offers to make money is even greater than all the pleasures you can take. Do you really think so? Well, be careful because it's not always like that. And there are true glories of the sport that have far exceeded the expenses in their standard of living, despite having the income of a millionaire. So sit back in your favorite chair and join us as we take a look at the list of top 10 NBA stars who spent more than they could afford and ended up bankrupt. Latrell Spraywell, a boat that leaked more than the Titanic. Latrell's race of fortune seemed endless. Every contract he signed year after year was getting juicier and juicier. His fortune was on the rise with teams like the Golden State Warriors, the New York Knicks, and the Minnesota Timberwolves. The latter offered him almost $30 million to renew his contract, but the player refused. The reason? We don't know, but we know what came next. Scandals with his ex-wife who prevented him from seeing his daughter, seizures on accounts for non-payment, the auction of his mansion for barely a million dollars, and what hurt him the most, the loss of his yacht. So this young promise was literally adrift. Dennis Rodman, a film with a big budget. It may sound strange to you, but there are people who knew Dennis for becoming the husband of the incredibly beautiful Carmen Electra for only a few days. And I remember meeting Dennis, and, and Dennis was the life of the party. He was fun. Our relationship was very passionate. So when it was good, it was amazing. And when it was bad, it was the worst. Or for starring in an action movie with Jean-Claude Van Damme. But really, this basketball legend accumulated five championships in the NBA with the Detroit Pistons and the Chicago Bulls. He was also voted Defender of the Year several years in a row, and was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2011. The problem came with his many scandals, his carefree lifestyle, excessive spending, alcohol, and drugs. Of course, it was thanks to this that his professional life was moved from the courts to the screen, but it wasn't enough for Rodman to end up with much more debts than income to officially consider himself in poverty. Scotty Pippen, lucky in the game, unlucky in business. One of the stigmas that good old Scotty had to suffer was that he was considered the shadow of Michael Jordan for having been his key partner in so many games. But when it comes to titles, Pippen won multiple championships with the Chicago Bulls, the NBA's flagship, and dream team at the 1992 Barcelona Olympics. And if we align ourselves with the above examples, we should conclude that Pippen's economic problems were due to his behavior. But nothing is further from the truth. The player made several bad economic decisions, which resulted in heavy losses that even caused him to sell his house, despite having accumulated the not insignificant sum of $120 million in his entire career. Allen Iverson, the song that doesn't rhyme with profit. Like his colleague Rodman, Iverson had the possibility to transcend the game thanks to an artistic facet. In his case, it was the singing, and he even recorded a rap CD. His pseudonym was Jules, but his lyrics were so aggressive against the gay community that it caused an immediate rejection, which took him far away from any kind of jewelry, and even from its monetary value. His manager, David Stern, who was also an NBA commissioner, decided not to release the album because of the criticism. But it didn't end there for the star, because in addition to being a compulsive fork and buyer of illegal weapons and drugs, to be a tax evader, and to have a very aggressive behavior on and off the court, he couldn't avoid sanctions that were taking away his fortune. And when he could no longer stand the appearances, he had to end up auctioning off his mansion for less than $5 million just to pay off debts. It didn't even help that when he retired, his jersey number didn't go back to the team he had revived, the Philadelphia Sixers, who despite everything, remember him with great affection. Too bad that's not enough to top up his wallet. Antoine Walker, with a little help for his friends. Do you think that with $108 million your future would be assured? Anyone would think so, even if you decided not to work any more in your life. But sometimes, the stars support a lifestyle that makes these numbers seem insignificant. Well, maybe not so much, but they're easy to lose quickly. Such is the case of Antoine Walker. I was into designer watches, you know, Rolexes, um, and, you know, timeless pieces that you can have forever. So I was into those type of things. All right, that was what you were into, but you also paid for things for friends, didn't you? You went places, you went to Vegas. Tell us about that aspect of it. A promising player who shortly before his 20th birthday had already won an NCAA championship and was chosen by the Boston Celtics in the 1996 NBA draft as number one. But when he started cashing in his first millionaire checks, Walker, who comes from a very humble background in a Chicago neighborhood, projected a life of luxury, buying cars, jewelry, and houses. 
Walker wanted his family and friends to be rich too, and that fact added to the economic crisis that ruined his real estate company, Walker Ventures. Ended up with the player's fortune, which he could no longer recover from, even on the court. Do you want to know what his lowest point was? Selling his NBA championship ring of the Boston Celtics to pay off some debts. Jeff, these guys are about to become full-time multi-millionaires, mates, girl, kids. What is your advice to them? You gotta be ready to prepare, build the right team around you. Make sure you have the right financial advice, right? Make sure you have the right people. Jason Caffey and his large family. There's a motto that says, don't have more children than you can handle. More than reasonable advice with so many work problems in the world. But if you're an NBA star making millions, would you think it? Well, Jason Caffey thought he had it covered when he went from wife to wife until he counted the not inconsiderable number of eight and added 10 children to all of them. No one can believe that beyond the great gains of the father of that great family, there would be no problems, but indeed, there were. Jason was a two-time NBA champion with the historic Chicago Bulls of Michael Jordan and company. And with a considerable sum of millions in the bank, he lost it all. Although he still had a few seasons left in the NBA, he was fired from Milwaukee, his last team, because of his problems with the law. He is now bankrupt, having had to pay living expenses. Vin Baker, an autographed coffee. If I were to tell you just that Baker went from playing for the Bucks to working at a Starbucks, it would be pretty much the sum of what happened to this NBA star. Baker had a problem with alcoholism, which led to him losing his fortune as a player, and he ended up wandering around several teams until he was fired for good. Vin was an excellent center in the mid-90s, was chosen in 8th place in the 1993 draft, and won the gold medal at the 2000 Sydney Olympics. To be honest, after working at the coffee chain, he was asked to commentate on the sport that launched him to fame. So despite having squandered more than 100 million on vices, he didn't end up so bad. Charles Barkley, the winning card. With an extensive career as a player for the Phoenix Suns, Houston Rockets, and Philadelphia Sixers, his fortune grew to over $30 million. It's great for a player to work hard, but if you're a gambler, maybe it's best if you don't have so much passion. We say this because gambling, and not basketball, is what ended up with Barkley's fortune. Charles Barkley, who is considered one of the best pivot wings in NBA history, and who has a place in the NBA Hall of Fame, now has a job as a commentator on NBA games with the TNT Network and he has managed to keep his gambling problems in the past. But from here, we recommend that you enjoy the financial peace of mind of your salary as a sports commentator without getting into trouble. Because even without the game as an excuse, Barkley has provoked several women with misplaced comments about gender violence. You know, it's too hard to lie, man. I tell people, it's too hard to lie because you have to remember everybody you lied to. Please, Charles, don't play with fire again. Sean Kemp, breastfeeding kids problems. Not just did Jason Caffey choose the luxury of having children without worrying about the number. If you don't believe it, meet Sean Kemp, one of the best players of his generation, curiously recruited from the streets because he did not go to college. Selected in the 1989 draft by the Supersonics in position 17, in company of Gary Payton, he led the franchise to be protagonist in a hard Western conference. One of Kemp's main strengths was the dunks many of which passed over the rival mercilessly. One of the most memorable was when he destroyed Alton Lister of the Golden State Warriors in the 1992 playoffs. It is estimated that during his career, he earned more than $100 million, but the expenses of his seven children with six different women, although it is rumored that it could have been many more, made a huge hole in his bank account. Could it be that these guys don't know about condoms? They're not that expensive in comparison. Kenny Anderson, fast and luxurious. Kenny Anderson has had an interesting life since retiring after a 14-year NBA career. Anderson was well known for his collection of cars, a Porsche Carrera, a Lexus, a Mercedes, and a custom Range Rover, among others. But not all of Anderson's whimsical spending was on luxury cars. He also contributed $250,000 per year to subsidize Kenny the Kid Enterprises, a company that employed five people to create a clothing line. It didn't pay off, so hopefully he at least enjoyed it. Anderson finally filed for bankruptcy. To be no less than his peers on this list, most of his debts are for the support of his minor children. Anderson has seven children with five different women. At least we hope that some of them will be NBA stars. So how was the video? Did you enjoy it? If so, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe down below. Don't forget to click the bell icon so you're always notified when we post our videos. See you next time!